What is a sunken ship? It's a big boat lying at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Whenever something becomes popular in media, there tends to be impersonators to follow, companies and creations that want to cash in and ride that tail cut of success. For Pixar, this happens a lot. Brave, Kiara the Brave. Cars, the Autobots. Ratatouille, Ratatouille. It's so beautiful here, everything is spinning. The people who make these movies have no shame whatsoever, and they know exactly what they're doing. It's all about the money. Money, money, money. Hell, some of these studios purposely wait for Pixar or Disney to release their films in theaters, and then cash in on unsuspecting people. Oh, little Billy told me that he loves that talking car movie. I'll buy him this DVD and surprise him. Grandma, I appreciate your generosity, but what the actual f is this? But out of all of the movies that Pixar has created, none of them have been ripped off more than Finding Nemo. I'm talking about dozens of clones. There are so many of them. The only other franchise from Pixar that comes close to these levels of plagiarism is Cars. But even then, Finding Nemo is clearly the winner. Well, <laughs> if you want to call that winning. So this got me to thinking, why is this particular property from Pixar the one that gets plagiarized the most? There has to be a reason. Yeah, it was a financial juggernaut, but there are other films from Pixar that have made more money. Why not target those instead? Well, from what I found out, there's quite a few reasons. But before we get to those points, I need to explain a couple of things first. Let's start off with the movie that made all of this bullshit possible. Little Nemo. <coughs> Finding Nemo. Here's Brucey. Finding Nemo is about a fish father and Ellen DeGeneres trying to find a fish son who is kidnapped by Australians. That's it. That, that's the movie. The film was written and directed by Andrew Stanton and was released in May of 2003. It was a massive success and almost broke a billion dollars at the worldwide box office. The only other films from Pixar to surpass it financially are Toy Story 3, Incredibles 2, and Finding Nemo. <clears throat> Needless to say, it was a smash hit and success of that caliber guaranteed imposters to follow. But I don't think anybody imagined that it would be on such an insane scale. I dug deep and found a ton of Nemo clones. Some of them are so bad that they barely qualify as functioning movies. Let me just add a few more of these. Here are my standards of what I believe qualifies a movie as a Finding Nemo clone. One when it follows the same storyline. As in, oh no, I have to find a missing loved one or find my way home. Maybe even both. Two, check out our coral reef and clownfish model. And three, when it tries to mimic the title and overall theme of Finding Nemo. As in, hey, we're a fish movie too. Now, just because a movie has talking fish doesn't necessarily mean it's stealing from Pixar. But the majority of the films I'm mentioning in this video are guilty of that and fall back on Nemo's success, some more than others. Like, look me in the eye and honest to God tell me that these films were not influenced by Finding Nemo. Go ahead, I'll wait. Wow, I've never seen a fish that looks like you before. And what's that little round thing bobbing next to you? <laughs> The first movie on my plagiarism list is going to stir up some controversy, but I don't care. It needs to be said. Shark Tale. Yeah, this film doesn't share anything directly in common with Finding Nemo, outside of being a fish movie, but there are some who believe that the film was made so DreamWorks could steal attention away from Pixar. Personally, I agree with that claim, and let me tell you why. <laughs> like most stories, we have to go back to the beginning, with the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, uh, Disney, 1994. 
So there were three guys who were running the show at Disney around this time. Frank Wells, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and Michael Eisner. Up to this point, they'd been making a stupid amount of money with all of their amazing animated films. One could call this era the Disney Renovation. Unfortunately, Frank Wells died in a tragic accident, and Katzenberg was like, sweet, I can get his job now. But then Eisner was like, uh, no, I don't think so. To which Katzenberg was like, why the hell not? And Eisner was like, cause you're an asshole, dude. And you're asking for Frank's job right after he died. So chill out. And then Katzenberg was like, uh, chill out. How about this? I quit and I'm gonna go make my own studio where I can dream about my works. I'll think of a name for it later. Eisner was like, fine, get out of here. We never needed you, get out of here. Also, we're never gonna pay you what we owe, and I'm sure that this decision will never have any horrible repercussions. Katzenberg then met up with his good friends, David Geffen and Spielberg, and they formed DreamWorks, a studio that would directly compete with Disney. So here's where things get tied back into our topic. After Toy Story in 1995, Pixar began work on a project called Bugs, to which it would be eventually called A Bug's Life. John Lasseter, one of the heads at Pixar, told Katzenberg about the project, to which Katzenberg was like, yeah, yeah tell me more. Hold on, I, I gotta write this down. When's the movie coming out again? Ants? Sweet, okay, Ants, thank you. Keep going, John, tell me more. According to Lasseter, Katzenberg stole the idea from Pixar, and the movie Ants was the final product. But according to Katzenberg, he never stole the idea from Pixar, as a film premise was an old concept from Disney called Army Ants. Regardless of the story, Pixar felt betrayed and saw DreamWorks as a competitor who wanted to exact revenge on Michael Eisner. And you thought middle school girls are full of drama. These business executives take that shit to the next level. You couldn't resist coming to see how far I'd fallen, but that was your mistake. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. No, you are the spider. I am the sun. I dry up all the rain. Yes, freeing me the spider to climb up the spout again. That brings us back to Shark Tale. Was the idea stolen from Pixar so DreamWorks can make their own movie? Personally, yeah, I think that is the case, even though Katzenberg denies it. They ripped off A Bug's Life, and then they ripped off Finding Nemo. It was their way to spit in the eye of Disney and Pixar. Nowadays, they're much more chilled out, but back when they first started, <laughs> woof, were they fighting dirty. Speaking of dirty, let's talk about the rest of these shitty ripoffs. There's a lot of them, so I'm gonna keep things brief. Now, I might double back on some of these films with separate reviews in the future, but no promises. All right, Izzy's Way Home. I actually did a separate review for this already, but it needs to be mentioned again. Out of all of the films on this list, Izzy's Way Home is the most shameless. How? Allow me to list the ways. The title of the movie. The main character having a birth defect. An overprotective father. A story about finding your way home. A story about a father finding his lost child. A dead mother. Fish. This movie was made by the Asylum. Those are the folks who make those mockbusters and purposely try to disguise themselves as more popular films. They suck, they're shameless, and Izzy's Way Home is utter trash. <laughs> Excuse me. Next, we have The Dolphin, story of a dreamer. Uh, huh. So uh, this movie is about Daniel Alexander Dolphin. Yes, that's, that's his actual name. Daniel Alexander Dolphin. Daniel is trying to find his purpose in life, or is it his porpoise? <laughs> I want to die! He goes on this big adventure and follows the voice of the sea, and at the end of the movie, he discovers the meaning of his existence to ride a giant wave. You have served the perfect way, and by doing it, have found the true purpose of your life. Next, we have Reef, aka Sharkbait. Okay, so this is a South Korean film that came out in 2006. 
The story is about this fish named Nemo. Ah, my, my, my bad. I, I meant pie. <clears throat> He's just a kid living with his parents, but oh no, humans catch his ma and pa in a big fishing net, trademarked. Seriously, it's like this movie stole the ending for Finding Nemo, but decided to use it as the intro for theirs instead. The rest of the movie is just ugh, absolute chaos. Like, let me just read the plot description here on Wikipedia. Pisces, or Pi, is a five-year-old orange fish that lives happily with his parents Pike and Piper in the polluted harbor of Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this already sucks. Until a fishing boat scoops them from the sea, Pi's parents manage to help him escape, but cannot escape themselves. Before Pi's parents are taken away, Piper tells Pi to promise her he would go live with his aunt. However, Pi soon encounters Troy, the meanest, toughest tiger shark in the ocean, who is not Pi only terrorizing the only everyone in the reef community, but also has his eyes set on the Shut up! Shut up! It's like this movie said, we want to borrow from Finding Nemo, but we gotta hide our tracks. Uh, how do we do that? Hmm. Let's come up with one of the most convoluted fish stories ever written. Yeah, that should do it. And let's hire Gimli and Rob Schneider too. Hell, maybe we can even make a sequel. After that, we have a turtle's tale. Sammy's Adventure. <laughs> this movie has one of the most unsettling introductions I've ever seen in a children's movie. So the film wants to stay accurate to nature and how things go down for sea turtles when they're born. Spoiler alert, it's, it's absolutely horrifying, as the majority of the baby turtles don't even make it to the sea. So I, I gotta ask, Whose bright idea was it to feature that in a kid's movie? It's like the equivalent of a bunch of human toddlers running across a field as they get mauled by grizzly bears. And some of the turtles don't even seem to care. It's like, oh, this seagull got me. <laughs> what, what can you do? Also, this movie has an environmental message, especially in its sequel. Uh, so get ready to go on a guilt trip. Humans were strange creatures. Some made a mess while others cleaned it up. That was our first contact with humans. It wouldn't be our last. Next, we have Deep. Honestly, it doesn't look terrible, but it still drags quite a bit. And just like a turtle's tail, this film too has an environmental message, except on an apocalyptic scale. You know how humans destroyed the Earth and Wally -E and then left it? Well, that's basically what happened here. Except for flooding the world with trash, we flooded it with actual water. The Nemo thievery comes in when our main character is charged with a quest to find a whale who can save his people. So essentially, this movie borrows from two Pixar properties. They need the whole earth and sea unlivable. Then they just up and left, left the whole planet to die. After that, we have sea level, aka seafood, aka fishing impossible. <laughs> All right, let's get ready to take some shots here. Borrows visuals and storyboards from Finding Nemo. Drink, environmental message that hits you over the head. Drink, main character that's on a quest to find something that was lost. Drink, and sharks are the villains of the film. I thought, I thought I could stop them this time. You shouldn't blame yourself, pup. Huh, well, how about that? This film doesn't look as bad as the others on the list. Heck, some of the visuals are passable, but everything else about this movie brings it down. Also, it just straight up steals from Finding Nemo. You guys using that storyboard? No? Cool, we're, we're gonna take it. Do you hear me? <gasps> and the final ripoff I wanna mention is Fish Tales. Out of all of the options on this list, Fishtails is the worst. I mean, their intro looks like a dumber version of that crab dance meme. The 
The dialogue is bad. The audio mixing is bad. The music is bad. All of the visuals are bad. The story is bad. Hell, I, I feel like I can't even call it a story. The characters in the first movie just float around, looking at live action shots of ocean life. A big old shark raced towards Ollie, nearly swallowed her in his big open jaw. Whoa, that's just wrong. Totally wrong. And then the second movie is just a bunch of the characters staring at you as they swim and talk about shit. People. People. All those earthy creatures with skin. It is awful. One of the worst things I've seen in quite some time. Plus, they call themselves an educational film about marine biology. But they can't even get the characters to properly represent the creatures that they are. Dolphins and whales do not have tail fins that go from side to side. They go up and down. How can you look me in the eye and tell me facts about the ocean when that's going on? Sea monsters eat fish? Oh! Oh! Oopa, oopa, oopsie! <laughs> Did it again. F you, fishtails. You absolutely suck. The next few things here are a little unorthodox, so I'm going to keep things short and to the point. First off, Depot. This guy is the mascot for the Georgia Aquarium and shares a visual style and name that's closely related to Nemo. I mean, I guess I can forgive the name, since it's a play on the word Depot, because the home Depot sponsors the aquarium. But like, come on, come on. Hey, where'd they go? They didn't get to on the highway. Next, there's Happy Little Submarine. What happens when you combine Finding Nemo with cars? Well, this. <laughs> Lastly, there's Kingdom Under the Sea. This one threw me off because I thought it was a ripoff that came out after Finding Nemo. But from what I read, it came out in 1999. So there's only one logical answer. Finding Nemo is a thief here. Pixar, you should be ashamed of yourself. Honestly, the two share very little in common. Actually, this show is Christian, and this character is supposed to represent God. Cause why not? It is time for you to take refuge. Hide yourselves inside me and you'll be safe from the red tide. Here's a quick little fun fact. Pixar actually got sued by a guy who said that they stole his idea for Finding Nemo. Apparently, he had his own clownfish story that was created in 1995 and was called Pierre Le Piet P P Parrot Pierre Le Pirate Le Poisson Clown. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know enough French to say this right. The writer said that Pixar copied his idea and used it for Finding Nemo. Of course, Pixar denies this and said that the idea was 100% original. Ultimately, the guy took Disney to court, demanded a share of the profits, and lost. Who would have guessed? Something's wrong with you, really. Okay, so we've talked about the origin of Finding Nemo, how it was very successful, and how a bunch of other studios have piggybacked on Pixar's success. But why is Finding Nemo ripped off to such a high degree? What makes it the main target for plagiarism, and not the rest of Pixar's filmography? Well, I have a couple of reasons why this is the case. Number one, it's easier to animate the characters. A question for you all. What do you think is easier to copy? A human with a walk cycle or a fish that just floats around? Ding, ding, ding. There's your answer. Obviously, Pixar did their homework and tried to capture every detail of how fish move around with their fins. But many of these other copycats just phoned it in. I mean, just look for yourself. They just magically float around. It's like zero gravity. I've had fun before. This isn't it. Number two, the setting is easier to build. 
Just like the first point, this one is all about simplicity. Why try and copy something difficult when you can throw a couple of rocks and plants into some water? Boom! Done! It's the ocean. It's blue. This is a grandiose discovery. All dreams come true when you're inside the purple shell. <laughs> I don't know. Number 3. Avoiding Copyright Laws as you can see from the movies on this list. It doesn't take much to tweak an idea and avoid a lawsuit. Uh, what's that? Nemo's about a father fish looking for his son? Well, now it's his daughter. And he's not even a fish, he's a dolphin that shoots lasers. And number four, and this is probably the biggest reason of all, money. Yeah, big shocker, right? Well, it goes a bit deeper than that. Like I said before, Finding Nemo was a huge hit at the movie theaters and made almost a billion dollars worldwide. But here's the thing, it almost broke a billion dollars in video sales. That is insane. The only other film to surpass Finding Nemo in overall video sales is The Lion King. And even then, not by too much. That being said, Finding Nemo did break a record and is the highest selling DVD of all time. It sold about 40 million copies. That's 15 million more than the film that's in second place. So of course, all of these copycat studios are going to take to this like a fish to water. You what? Okay, I'm sorry, that, that, that's my last pun, I promise. But seriously, if any of these movies could siphon away a fraction of what Finding Nemo made, well, that's still a ton of money. Make some movie about fish, make the cover art look like Finding Nemo, and then hope that unsuspecting buyers can't tell the difference. Boom! You just got paid, you scummy sons of bitches. Oh, such big heads, such tiny brains. So yeah, that's why Finding Nemo is one of the most ripped off movies in film history. It's popular, it's successful, and it's very easy to copy. I can only imagine that the artists who stole from Pixar were glad that they only had to animate a fish and not a human being. I mean, could you imagine how ugly that would look? 